I wonder if that old motorcycle will run. Let's find out. I got a few things to move. There's an old motorcycle frame, there's nothing up there, and then a trailer with a steam engine on it. So let me get all that moved out and get this thing in the basement and see if it'll run. Well, there it is. It's a 1974 XL125. And I was trying to remember last time I rode it. I believe I was probably 15 at the oldest. So it's been sitting in the barn 33 years. 33 years it has not ran. Uh, spark plugs out of it. Don't know. I don't remember how long that's been out. I, you know, I robbed parts off of it for another bike or four wheeler or something. It's stuck and won't turn over. So what I'm going to do is pull it inside and I'm going to fill the cylinder up with crow oil and let it set for a day or two and then we'll come back and see if it'll spin over. Well I filled the cylinder with crow oil last night and let it set till today and first time I kicked it it turned over so it broke loose that's good it was building compression I held my finger over the spark plug hole and it was building compression but then it started blowing back out the exhaust So that tells me at least the exhaust valve is stuck, but uh, you can see right here, it kicks over very easily. Uh, I really don't remember why I parked this thing. I don't know if y'all remember me telling you in, I think, the first go-kart video, I had two of these motors. I'd work on one, fix it, put it on here, ride it while I fixed the other. Then this one would mess up. I'd swap them out, fix the other one, kept doing that. The other motor, it's sitting in the barn right now with the head half pulled off. What the issue was back then is the timing chain was so loose and the timing chain tensioner was adjusted just as far as I could get it adjusted and it would still skip timing on the chain. Of course, you know, that caused it to bend the valve. I thought that's what was wrong with this one was a bent valve, but if it's building compression or was at first, then it's not a bent valve. So I think what I'm going to do first is roll it out, blow all this dust off. Then uh, we'll roll it back in, see if I can get the valves unstuck, if we can do that. And then I might check the valve timing, and then we'll see if we can get the thing running. She cleaned up pretty good. At least I won't get filthy working on it. I think what I'm going to do is take these caps off right here. That's where you, you take them off and set the uh, valve lash. There's one back here too. And to be able to get to them easily, I need to take the gas tank off. Well, to get the gas tank off, I need to take the seat off. Well, the seat has been welded to the frame. Now, I didn't know how to weld when I was 15. And that weld looked like a 15 year old that didn't know how to weld, welded it. So I'm having to grind that off so I can get the seat off. And then maybe I can get in there and see which valve is moving. And if I got one stuck, then we'll work on that, getting it unstuck.
apparently I made a nail bracket here, bolted it through, and then welded them on. Huh. Gas tank still got gas in it. Pretty rusty too. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> That's some pretty rotten gas right there. All right, now I'm going to turn it over and see which valve is moving, or if either valve is moving, then we'll determine which one's stuck. All right, there's a the valve adjuster right there. Watch and see if it's moving. No, sir, not at all. Hmm. Intake, same way. No movement. So then, I'd say the chain is broke. So the motor's got to come off and take the head off. Well, apparently I have attempted to take the carburetor apart at one point. The bowl is missing. I got the top over there laying on the table. Where the bowl is, I don't know. I'll have to look out there in the barn and see if we can find it. But then I found this gem right here. Uh, well, it looks like it's a piece of bark <laughs> holding this air filter in. Hey, if it works, it works. Don't make fun of it. I don't know what holds that in originally but hey it apparently worked because i rode this bike a lot apparently the brake pedal ain't stuck nor is the rear brake because the arm is moving anyway whether or not it works i don't know Well, the exhaust port is almost completely stopped up with dirt dauber's nest. So that's never a good sign. And this is the 100cc. You can tell by the 99 right there. So the one in the barn tore half apart is the 125. I'm going to say, well, you can see right here. This adjuster, how far up it is. This is the adjuster for the uh, the timing chain tensioner. And you see how how tall that is right there? That means it's adjusted pretty much all the way. It can be tight. So it probably didn't break the chain. I'd say the chain just came off of the sprocket. So I'm going to probably start. Let's pull this side cover off first and see what we find out. I've got the memory of a tree stump and I forget 10 seconds after I do something. So I normally put my bolts and screws back in the holes that go. That way I don't have to remember and I don't forget. Well, there's the chain, and it shouldn't be that close to each other. Matter of fact, it should be on the other side of this little aluminum piece right here, riding on this. This is your tensioner over here. See where this screw is I was talking about? 
and it, it bows that out and tightens the chain up and it's just as tight as it can go because the chain is so wore out and this tensioner may be wore out too. But the chain ain't broke, I don't think. It, it looks like it come off the cam up here. So I might as well go ahead and tear the head off and uh, see what else we can get into. Oh, I see now. All right, I see what's going on now, I'm getting this flywheel off. There's threads on the inside here and you got to have a mama bolt. That's a millimeter bolt to push it off, pull it off. I probably ain't gonna have one. Let me go look and see. Here's my bucket of millimeter bolts, M&Ms, mamas, whatever you want to call it. Let me show you this. <laughs> Daddy, I don't know if y'all have seen this in other videos. He hung all the tools up. It's pretty convenient too. But over here is the millimeter section. And if you look right up there, it says, mm mm. <laughs> then you come over here to the sockets. And what does it say? Mama. <laughs> that was a strange man, but he was brilliant. Taught me everything I know. All right, let me show y'all what I'm going to do. This is a metric uh, set of taps and dies. I don't have a bolt, and I don't know what size it is, so I found a tap that will fit the hole. So then what I'm going to do, find out what it is. It is an M14 by 1.5. So what I'll do, and I'll get the M14 by 1.5 die, and then I'll go over here to the lathe and turn down a bolt to the right major diameter, and then I'll run that die over it, because the lathe doesn't do metric bolts. It's pretty old. It's probably from the 50s. It don't do metric bolts, so this is the best way to make me a metric bolt. Alright, I know it's a little long, but it'll work. I got a three-quarter inch bolt. I'm going to turn it down to 14 millimeter, which is 551 thousandths, if you're American, like me. Then, I'm going to run this die over it, and we'll have us a 14 millimeter by 1.5 bolt that we can use as a puller for that flywheel. Let's see if it'll screw in. Oh yeah, fits like a glove. Let me get me a big old socket. Well, they pulled it right off. All right, got the flywheel off, and I believe I see what happened. This little piece here will hook to the tensioner, and then it'll go here on the adjuster like so. This is your adjuster, by the way. It, it'll bow and tighten up on the chain. That chain's supposed to be over here like this. All right, uh, you see that tensioner moving? When you screw the screw down, this piece goes down and it straightens out the tensioner. Well, when you screw it up, it makes it bow. Well, here's what the issue is. There's supposed to be a little clip on the end of that, which will hold this in place. Let me put this back in, I'll show you. All right, it's in place. That clip should keep it from moving down. Well, you see what's happening. It's moving down. That tensioner is flattening out and loosening the chain up. So the chain is probably slapping this. And see that move? That, and, it, and it loosened the chain up and it jumped off the sprocket. That's most likely what happened. The sprocket here looks good. And I'm going to look at the one on the uh, uh, cam up here. And if that sprocket looks good, the chain looks pretty good. 
I may put it back together. And of course, you know, put a clip on the end of that. And if the chain will tighten up pretty good, I'm going to put the sucker back together and run it. So let me get this up here off. Look at the cam sprocket. And we'll go from there. Well, there's the cam gear. It is quite wore out. I mean, that looks really bad. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll get a cam gear, maybe a chain, and this uh, tensioner is delaminating. You can see it right there. So I'll see if I can find one of them also. Uh, I really didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on this thing, but I do want to see it run. So let me see if I can find them parts first before I go any further. Well, I went ahead and pulled the head off. Good news is there's no valves that are bent. I'll probably go ahead and pull them out though and relap them. But there is just all kind of crud on that piston. My goodness. So I guess I'll clean this up real good and this tensioner well, it won't come out. This tensioner, well, you can see it flopping there. It's coming apart, and it's got some pretty good grooves wore in it. So I'll see if I can find a new tensioner, too. I'll need a head gasket, I need a cam sprocket, a uh, chain. The cam looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's wore, but, I mean, my goodness. It's just an old junky motorcycle. It'll do just fine. So I think whilst I wait on parts, I will lap these valves. I'll clean everything up real good. And then I'll pull that carburetor part right there and get to cleaning on it. Hopefully I can get these parts in two or three days. All right, I'm fixing to pull the valves out of the head. To do that, I gotta get the rocker arms out of the way first. So you have to take this bolt out and get this little retainer out of the way. And then you got rocker shaft on either side. They're threaded on the inside. You just run a bolt in there, put a slide hammer on it, and yank them right out. So let me get that done. I'm just using the head bolt that I took out a minute ago to uh, get these uh, rocker shafts out. spring compressor that will fit in here so we're going to try a redneck way with a c-clamp i don't think it's going to work but i'm going to give it the old try i really don't remember how i used to do this when i was a kid well i know i didn't have a spring compressor then this looks like it's going to work if i can get it past the keepers I hope I can get them off the valve stem with this and then take this magnet and get them out of the head. I don't think I'm compressed enough. the old magnet and get that other one out. Oh, oh, where did it go? Well, I lost it. I'll get it out in a minute. Oh, yeah, we got her now. Yeah, we got her now. Look at there. Double spring. There's the other keeper. All right, let's get this valve out. Well, the valve face itself doesn't look too bad. Let me clean that seat up and see what it looks like. That 
actually ain't too bad, but it is a little rusty. So I think I'll go ahead and lap both of them in. Let me get this other valve spring off first. Well, it ain't nothing wrong with that intake valve. That's just as pretty as you can get. Huh. All right, I just put the exhaust valve back in and it was wonky looking, sitting in the seat. It is definitely bent. I can spin it around and yeah, it's definitely bent. Let me see if I can show you here. Watch it, watch it wobble. It's definitely bent. So I need an exhaust valve now too. I hope I can find all these parts. Well, I got on the interwebs last night searching for parts and I could find most of them, but uh, they think a lot of them. And I, like I said, I really don't want to spend a bunch of money on this. So what I'm going to do is go to the barn and get that 125 and see if the cam sprocket is good on it and maybe the exhaust valve also. If it is, then I'm going to rob those parts and we're going to put this back together and we're going to make it run. Well, there's the 125. Here's the head. I can't find the cam anywhere. I mean, do you think you could find it in all this junk here? <laughs> I'm going to take this inside and look at the valve. See if I think I can use it. It sure would be nice if I could run up on that cam. So I may even end up having to buy a cam sprocket. Because that one in there, there's just no way I'm going to use it. Well, this exhaust valve is bent too. You see it wobble here. I thought that was the issue on both of them, why I quit riding them. So, I guess I'm going to have to buy an exhaust valve and a cam sprocket. So, back to the interwebs and let me get those ordered. Well, I had to order them parts on eBay. That means it'll take four or five days for them to get here. So, that's going to end this video up. Hopefully, next video, we'll get it running and I'll be able to ride around the yard a little bit. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share the video with your family, friends, enemies. It don't matter. And until next time, go do something. Bleep, bloop.